um, so we watched the first one, the YouTube's dark, darkest iceberg part one. So naturally we have to watch part two. I will say I might post this on the main channel. I might just go back to putting everything on the main channel. So it might be weird. So if you look for the other one, haven't seen it yet, it will be on the leftover channel, but you could just pop, you know, whatever, look up YouTube's darkest iceberg, pop it out, whatever it'll come up. Anyway, let's get started. The other one was a banger. It also scared me. It made me scared. It made me scared and sad. So I'm hoping that doesn't happen again. Icebergs, one of nature's most awe-inspiring. I'm scared. I'm scared. Both beautiful and treacherous. Welcome back to part two of YouTube's Darkest Iceberg. With this format, That's each level will progressively get darker and darker uh, until we okay. reach the very bottom, where I'll go over some of the content here that to this day leaves me utterly disturbed. And like what I will say is I liked when Windagoon did it because he was, his voice isn't that scary. His voice made it less scary for me to listen to. So I liked that one more in case anybody was curious about that. Not that you care, but... Last time, I'll be having some friends join me and guiding you down to the very depths of this iceberg. Oh, but Mama Max. Last time, things are about to get much, much more disturbing. So sit back, relax, and I will see you all at the very bottom. Okay. Start from the bottom. Now we're here, brother. Hey, what's up, you guys? Yes, it's your boy Carcass Husband. Back to you with another. This shit's so fun. Not a particular fan of this guy. It's... But okay. Fucking right. difficult. Now, without further ado, let's get right into the pedophiles. Romeo Lacoste, once considered one of the most prominent tattoo artists in the celebrity sphere, Romeo ran a YouTube channel centered around his career, where he would accrue fame after racking up over 1 million subscribers. Though before long, predatory accusations began to emerge about oh, his interactions snap. with young fans behind the scenes. In March of 2019, oh, snap, a series of DMs and text messages between Romeo and two girls would be released, with the messages coming from back in 2016, when the girls were just 14 and 15 years old. Well, that's not good. How old was this guy? I'm just curious. Let me see. What was his name again? In March of accusation came after arrests in the there. This shit's so fucking difficult. Now, without further ado, let's get right into the pedophiles. Romeo Lacoste. Romeo Lacoste. Oh, let's see. This guy's 33. Okay. Once considered one reason. In March of 2019, a series of DMs and text messages between Romeo and two girls would be released, with the messages coming from back in 2016. So he's 27 at this point. Okay. Right? 2016, he would be 27? Yeah, that's definitely inappropriate. Uh, it's, it's definitely. I had, I had to just verify. When the girls were just 14 and 15 years old. Despite their young age, Romeo sent them a manifold of violent, sexually charged messages, all like the while what? knowing full well he was chatting with minors. Huh. And from then on, his once enjoyable life began to cascade down an agonizing staircase of anguish. Well, that's good. Well, it, well, it's a good thing that his life got worse, right? He's messaging kids, yeah. ...lobbied in his way. His ex-girlfriend went on record and claimed she too was groomed by him, being only 14 at the time they started dating, while what? he was 19. There was little silly uh, Romeo could see okay. yeah, himself not great. in the wake it's of not these good, allegations. Really. And as predators usually do, he somehow managed to make things even worse for himself by opening his foul mouth. Um, there's a part where you say, are you willing to do it before uh, yes. you turn 18? Yes, so let me address that. So that, I'm not going to deny that was real, but here's here's the twit. Here's here's the big loop about it. Here's the big sort of like, you know, fabrication, smoke and mirrors or whatever that everyone's not getting to see is that, you know, the, a lot of these girls, let me, I'll just make a quick backtrack. I'll keep it really short. It is now clear that Romeo is in fact. Yet well, I wanted to hear what he had to say. I mean, it was going to be bad. I could tell, but I wanted to know exactly exactly what his dog shit defense was another statistic in the long line of pathetic internet predators who have gone unpunished and this has not stopped him from continuing his career as an influencer despite his channel floating dead like a bloated corpse in the murky waters of youtube history he has gone on to grow a sizable following on tiktok many of whom are unaware of his disturbing history and he's verified on there shit they band made it come on the fuck you guys got pedophiles running around you can't have me running around i'm just ugly i mean come on give me a fucking break dude you know, my, give me my account back. Verify it, bro. I could have been a predator in what may go down as one of the most sussy... Yes, sexes. finally! Somebody's calling this fucking goblin dog shit piece of fucking human filth out. Glenn and Cameron, the fucking disgusting piece of fucking garbage. Holy fuck. This guy was bragging about... Dude, this guy bragged about how he engaged in the rape of a 16, 17-year-old girl with the help of their mother. 
Like, this is how fucked this guy is. This guy's a fucking disgusting piece of shit. Somebody asked him what he think age of consent should be, and he's basically just said, well, as long as they look adult, uh, old enough. That's it. This guy's a fucking useless scum piece of fucking garbage. It's crazy. He he literally praised, like, the aspect of Viking rape culture of the rape part. Like, it's fucking crazy how much how unhinged this guy is over multiple videos. On YouTube, a creator by the name of Glendon Cameron would post a video in 2021 titled, I could have been a predator. That R. Kelly energy is different and all-consuming. Okay. In it, the 55-year-old man shares a story about sleeping with a 17-year-old girl. Apparently, she had told him that she was actually 21, and yet despite discovering she was still a senior in high school while he himself was over 40 years old, he made the decision- Oh, at the time he was at 30, I believe he was in his 30s, um, but okay. ...decision to continue sleeping with her for the next five years while persisting to admit he had much similar instances with other young girls. Yeah. I was like, I need you to tell me something. How old are you? And then she got very silent and she said, I'll be 18 in four months. And you know what I kept doing? I kept f***ing her. On top of his 1000 IQ among us strategic move to confess to this, he would also go on to express sympathy for R. Kelly, comparing themselves as they True. both seem to have an appetite for younger girls. I have a similar appetite to R. Kelly. I like young women. Before further dismissing claims that R. Kelly was a predator by saying, R. Kelly is being portrayed as a predator, right? Did he hold a gun to these women's heads? Currently, Glendon runs a channel called the Institute of Economic Thought. Okay, why the f*** do predators always title their sh like this? Like they're some kind of pretentious intellectual. True. We see right through you, buddy. Shut the f*** up. It has over 100,000 subscribers, not to mention his other countless pages hosting utterly garbage content. EDP 445. Yeah, it's worse than that. You'd have to look into a lot of their videos, so I, I can see why they don't have more than that. But it, it's much worse than that. This guy is like fucking insane. He talked like attorney. I think it was a... Uh, one of the a lawyer guy and uh he, it was fucking crazy like the shit that he was saying it's fucked man i have like a whole series on the guy you can look it up what was probably one of the most explosive stories in all of 2021 youtube edp glenn cameron's worse than that because they, they didn't even get into the like in that video he fucking admits that like he he hung out with this woman that was like i think it was older than him at the time and she had kids and she he, he was like yeah and she wanted to raise her kids to like black bulls like fucking black men a big black cock, basically, and they didn't want to do it, but like they, they fucking, they, they had like a forced interaction in front of them. It was fucked shit, dude. Like it's so much, it's it's so much worse than, uh, it's just so much worse than this fucking video portrays it as. There's a lot more to it than that, you know. He was a once popular creator who had been caught attempting to meet a 13 year old girl whom he had been sending explicit messages to for months. We have you talking to Sophie. Correct, yes or no? Right. And before we get into the messages, there was sexual content involved, yes or no? Right. And you said Correct. Okay, all right. So what brings you out here today? Oh, I was actually coming out here to pick up a cupcake. This led to the instantaneous so removal of his YouTube channel and what many assumed to be the end of his online career. As on top of this, the infamous cupcake- Nah, he's still trucking on, dude. He's, apparently he's been doing TikTok lives recently. ...incident was far from the first time allegations have come out against him. It would seem he has a long history with messaging minors. Interestingly, in spite of the immense backlash he's faced, he is still attempting to make a comeback to this day, having been caught on sites like Vimeo, TikTok, and of course, YouTube, where he recently started a new channel within just a few weeks of Nick starting this video. Though all of these accounts, to our knowledge, have since been taken down. The fact he's still trying to carve his silly self back into the online sphere after everything he's done means that this likely won't be the last time we hear from him. What saddens me the most, though, is the fact that these new pages quickly gain a considerable amount of fanfare in their short lifespans. As he has a pretty big TikTok. I hope, I wish they would have called that out as well. That would have been good. He has a pretty big TikTok, unfortunately. Pretty sizable TikTok. Many of his fans have forgiven him for his predatory ways. Sad. Plasma Master Don. Once considered a wholesome figure by masses on the internet, known for his shitty covers of popular songs. It would eventually be publicly unveiled by the one and only Nicholas Crowley that this feeble elderly man, Donzel Owens Jr., was actually a convicted sex offender. Called it, but perhaps the most surprising development came in the what was what he get convicted of following the expose Nick made about him, as the dawn would soon brutally die after this. Well, that's probably not bad. Well, say Nick made about him as the dawn would. Let's see, what did he do? What was his? What, what, how I see a sex offender. I wonder. Just, I wonder if was it like a violent thing, or sometimes people do like dumb shit. Like some people like flash people, 
and they get to put on the um on the list. It's like weird. Soon brutally die after this. The plot twist of Plasma Master Dawn's anti-redemption arc on YouTube truly remains one of the most captivating. Oh, it looks like it's the assault. And if okay, what what is the assault? I'm just looking it up. <clears throat> um. Oh, it was revealed that he was a pedophile who went by the name of Okay Edward Owens and had sexually assaulted a young underage male in hometown app. Yeah, it's pretty fucking gross, bro. Okay, there we go. Getting stories ever to unfold in this platform and shows us yet again that even the most wholesome personalities on camera are still capable of doing some of the greatest evils behind closed doors. Seven Supergirls. Perhaps one of the most high-profile predator cases in YouTube's history. Seven Supergirls was a channel that had amassed over 9 million subscribers. Its content ranged from shopping hauls to skits to daily routines, but at its core was always centered around a variety of teenage girls, as this was also the page's targeted demographic. At least Sounds like Degrassi. On the surface. Its creator, a man named Ian Rylett, was also the founder of a variety of other teen-based channels, with a man garnering a staggering 17 million subscribers in total. And for years, he operated these channels with minimal controversy, earning him an enormous amount of wealth in the process, as is the normal life cycle with channels like these. It would all come crashing down in 2019 when he was accused of molesting one of the underage actresses Christ. he hired. On top of this, Ian would often undress this particular actress and threaten her with fines if she refused to give in to his demands. Upon the allegation being made, it would also be brought to light that the contracts he forced solely to his underage actresses to sign were concerning, to say the least. With one line reading, it is likely there will be physical or bodily contact, potentially of an intimate nature. You what the fuck, dude? That's Jesus Christ. And pedophiles never fail to disgust the world around you. That's a contractual pedophile. What the fuck? The hell? <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's fucking terrible. Oh my the god. The discovery eventually <clears throat> led to Ian's arrest, to which he would plead guilty of molestation and be charged with lewd or lascivious battery of a minor. And what was his punishment, you may be wondering? Probably Life not a prison? lot. That'll do. 20 years. I'll take that. 10 years? Better than nothing. 5 years. Okay, you're pushing it. 1 year? You are joking, right? No, how about 90 days? Yeah, he got sentenced to 3 months in prison. Anyway, Ian's channels were terminated by YouTube, and that's the end of 7 Supergirls. Fake Challenges Though the focus of this section has solely been on creators, in reality the majority of the predators here on YouTube are hiding in the audience. Very early on, disturbed individuals discovered that if they could find little-known YouTube channels run by young kids, they could coerce them into performing lewd acts for them, and they did so under the guise of fake challenges. Essentially, the commenter would propose a challenge they made up themselves in order to have the child creator get into a suggestive pose or perform an action with <clears throat> sexual undertones. For example, one of these predators would comment on a child's video saying they should try the bend over challenge or the shower challenge, spurring kids to. Dude, there was this one guy on TikTok who used to be like, "Oh, you should, uh, you should go in a bathtub with like all your clothing on." Tee hee, that would be really funny. Kind of a shit, like it's fucking weird, bro. Like, it's fucking bizarre. Film themselves doing said action and uploading it to YouTube, completely unaware that they were providing sexualized content for the commenter. It's an extremely sickening practice, though one that thankfully has been drastically reduced through YouTube removing the comment sections on videos made by minors. Ah, uh, that makes sense. This section that. has been brought to you by Mama Max. Subscribe to my YouTube channel because I'm better than Nexpo and Nick Crowley combined. If you had to compare both of us, you'd probably say they're like, uh, they're like Krillin, and I'm like, uh, Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye now. Okay. Thank you so much, Max. Everyone make sure to go not subscribe to him. From here on out, things are going to get even less brand friendly and demonetization is pretty much inevitable. So I want to give a massive thank you to our sponsor, Upside, for making this video financially possible. It is no secret that here in the US, inflation has been a little rough lately. And by a little rough, I mean historically. Well, I feel like it may not have been so bad if you didn't start off with the pedoph <laughs> pedophile shit, but okay. Awful. And it's led to most of us trying to find new ways to cut back by driving right, less guys. or dining out less. Go buy this thing. We'll but see Upside what it is. offers a unique <clears throat> solution to this. Upside is an app that gives you cash back on your everyday uh, purchases without the use of any special. I don't know. Okay, cool. Let's move on. Linda Rogers' last video. Linda Rogers' last video refers to a tragic event that occurred back in February of 2018. Around this time, there had been a series of natural gas leaks that unfortunately resulted in a number of houses quite literally exploding in an instant. That's fucking These crazy. leaks led to the deaths of nine people across North and Central Texas, including the subject <laughs> of this video. 
The video itself is a time lapse of 12 year old Linda Michelita Rogers, who was supposed to be included in a morning style vlog video she was creating. Unfortunately, though, this video would never be completed, as shortly into the time lapse, one of these freak gas explosions occurs. Jesus Christ. In just a matter of three frames, you see Linda, electricity, and flames, and then smoke before it cuts to black. Linda did not survive the blast, leaving. Dude, that's fucking horrible. Only this chilling clip to show what she was doing in her final moments, which her family has since uploaded to bring awareness to this terrifying phenomena. Body in a Cooler. This entry deals with a clip that surfaced back in 2020, titled Found Dead Body in a Cooler at a Lake, in which a group of kids discover a long abandoned cooler in the woods. This is gay. I got duct tape all over it. It's snow. So, there's maggots. Oh, no. Fuck that. Of course, you find that. What is the first thing you do? Open it. You fucking dumb kids. They're goofing around and laughing, as most kids at their age would. But things begin to grow more serious as they notice it's emitting a terrible smell. This group takes turns daring each other to open it, until someone finally does. And what they find inside is nearly indescribable. It's impossible to tell what it really is, or was, as the cooler was completely filled with what the kids first assumed to be dead fish. Though in the last two minutes of the video, they begin to realize that this may very well be something far more sinister and they decide to call the police. The footage ends with no resolution, leaving an air of uncertainty surrounding their discovery. Though within the comments, an update would soon emerge describing the alleged truth behind the substance found in the cooler, which read, Update on the situation. It was a dead infant that was neglected and abandoned in that cooler filled with water. Location will not be disclosed due to privacy reasons. The validity of this... Jesus Christ. I mean, we don't know if that's true or not, but holy... F that's horrible. This is terrible. This... Why do you guys like me watching these videos? They make me so uncomfortable and sad. ...video is something that is yet to be confirmed, meaning that this could quite possibly be a hoax, but something about the contents of that cooler seems all too real. Granny Ripper. Granny Ripper refers to a video on YouTube depicting the infamous Russian serial killer, Tamara Samsonova. Samsonova was arrested in July of 2015 on suspicion of two murders, but is now suspected of nearly 15. She Jesus has since become Christ. infamous, not only for her crimes, but for her old age, as at the time of her arrest, she was nearly 70 years old. Jesus. So this didn't stop her from committing some of the most gruesome crimes imaginable. In the YouTube video, serial killer Granny Ripper filmed footage of Russia. We see Samsonova standing in an inconspicuous blue parka captured by her apartment's CCTV. Carefully, she walks back and forth, bringing out what appears to be a covered pot. On the evening of July 26, the body of Samsonova's roommate, Valentina Nikolaevna Ulanova, was discovered decapitated with severed limbs, with it later being determined that within this very container was the actual head of Ulanova. Sam what the fuck? Just walking around casually with a fucking head in a pot. Jesus Christ. Samsonova would be arrested on July 29, 2015, thanks to the damning CCTV footage that has now been leaked to YouTube. Though what many have found most chilling about this video was the smile she gives upon her capture even blowing a kiss to the camera, clearly showing a complete lack of remorse for all the death she caused. The streamer finds a body. There have been a few instances of streamers happening upon a deceased person. This entry specifically refers to a video in which two streamers named Goo Cheese and Stop Speeding are streaming a casual walk down a sidewalk. Goo Cheese then mentions that when she had been walking by the same spot earlier, she had passed a homeless man who was not moving, though they had assumed that they were simply sleeping. You didn't want to like, call the cops or something? Okay. However, I guess that makes sense. That same location, to notice that the man is still there. Oh my god, this guy? Or no, it's not this guy. Someone was in like a bed sheet and I thought they were a dead body. You're not a dead body, are you? The two joke around, attempting to get the attention of the man and wake him up, though there is no response. This leads to one of the individuals feeling the arm of the man only to discover that the body is freezing cold. The stream then devolves to chaos as Gucci breaks down crying with the reality setting in that the man has passed. No! Jesus Christ. It's a tragic scenario, not just for the man whose life was lost, but also for the streamers who undoubtedly live with the trauma of discovering a dead body. And all while they're just... Yeah, you know, I imagine uh, maybe that guy's a little more traumatized, but I get what you're saying. ...to have a normal stream with their audience. The last selfie photo. The last selfie photo is a video showing what looks to be dozens of people clinging to the wheels of a plane as it prepares to take off. It quickly becomes clear that their idea here is to ride the plane the same way one would hitchhike a train. Why? But unfortunately, that's not how it works. This video was recorded in August 2021 in Afghanistan, mere hours after the United States announced that they were withdrawing all military presence in the area. Why did you do this? People realized that this country would soon fall to the Islamist extremist Taliban and did whatever they could to escape. And Jesus. And footage, we see a group of people attempting to do just that.
That's fucking crazy. Though their attempts would be futile, as everyone who hung onto the plane either were crushed when the wheels had shifted back into the plane's body, or fell to their deaths soon after liftoff. Their actions are unfortunately reflective of sheer desperation to escape, especially considering that even if they had managed to hang on <clears> somehow, their bodies would not have been able to stand the extreme cold of that altitude, meaning that they were not going to make it either way. Thankfully, Damn. the video cuts off before we see the devastation firsthand. <clears throat> and the planes didn't want to land and be like, okay, guys, you got to stop grabbing on. You'll die. Maybe they just didn't know. That's fucking crazy, dude. But the aftermath was likely. That's fucked. That's, that's, that's a fucking testament to how horrible the fucking Taliban are for them to be like, yeah, we're willing to do something insane just to escape. Fucking nuts, dude. Extremely brutal. Schizophrenia Dad refers to a video in which the uploader, Newsy Girl 2008, records her father in various stages of what appears to be a mental break, which is confirmed by the text at the beginning of the video, stating that this footage was recorded on the way to a psych ward. Hello, Bride of Christ. This is your little servant boy, King of America. It starts out with the dad addressing the camera, rambling nonsensically, before a darker turn. <laughs> I mean, listen, dude. How how do we know? How do we know that some of the disciples from back in the day aren't schiz weren't like schizophrenic or something? And people were just like, "Dad, these must be the Messiah." You know what I mean? This must be the Messiah. This must be Jesus Christ. I'm not saying that's true. I'm just saying that ever since we we started focusing on mental health, we stopped the uh, we stopped having uh you know the word of God wasn't spread as much anymore. I talked to a bush. Oh yeah. That's the, imagine that back in the day. I oh, I talked to a bush. It was God. Oh fuck, I believe you. Of course. That's what, what what other excla uh, explanation could there be? Now we're just like, wow, you you belong in the you belong in you need an evaluation. You know what I mean? <laughs> Why aren't the they stopping? Cuts, we can see the uploader's dad hanging out on the side of a car. Why we can hear the family members pleading for him to get back into the vehicle. Though, Why aren't they stopping? Why aren't they stopping the car? What's obvious that this episode had left him completely out of control. The video ends with footage of him flashing passing cars and smoking a cigarette while continuing his rambling. Okay. Well, Delving least... into the comment section, the uploader reveals that prior to this video, her dad had been missing for weeks before returning and dragging her brother out of bed. Her comments go on to say, My mom and I didn't know until we heard my brother cry out for help, but by then, we were in the car and driving away. We thought he was going to kill my brother, but he came back and my brother told us he had drowned her dog in the river. He stripped naked, so mom said, Time to go to the hospital. It turns out the man in this video is named Roland Kennard, and unfortunately, he didn't make it very long after this video was recorded, Damn. as he died of suicide on November 25th, 2001, about a year after the footage was taken. Rapire. Rapire refers to another haunting bit of CCTV footage. In it, we see a bus preparing to let people off as people walk by idly on the sidewalk. About 45 seconds in, as riders exit the vehicle, a black car recklessly pulls up behind the bus and comes to a stop. A figure then emerges from the car and grabs one of the riders, a girl who was just 15 years old, what the and fuck? then forces her to the ground. After a few seconds off camera, they come back into frame and the man forces the person into the car. They then quickly take off into the night. And nobody thought to stop them? This is a pretty cut and dry kidnapping, but what's most disturbing about this video is how the bystanders simply don't react. They either stand by and watch or continue their night as if nothing happened. Why? A true case of the bystander effect in action. Why? Why the fuck didn't they do anything? What the fuck? Dead diver. Where was this? Why did they do nothing? CCT. Rapire. Rapire refers to another haunting bit of CCTV footage. In it, we see a bus preparing to let people off as people walk by idly on the sidewalk. About 45 seconds in, as riders exit the vehicle, a black car recklessly pulls up behind the bus and comes to a stop. A figure then emerges from the car and grabs one of the riders, a girl who was just 15 years old, and then forces her to the ground. After a few seconds off camera, they come back into frame and the man forces the person into the car. They then quickly take off into the night. This is a pretty cut and dry kidnapping. I don't understand why nobody was like, oh, we shouldn't let this happen. What the fuck? That's insane, dude. That's fucking crazy. But what's most disturbing about this video is how the bystanders simply don't react. They either stand by and watch or continue their night as if nothing happened. A true case of the bystander effect in action. The Blue Hole Dead Diver. The Blue Hole is a famous diving spot located in Sinai, an area a few kilometers north of Dahab, Egypt. Since it's a sinkhole that reaches a depth of nearly 400 feet and lacks a current, its popularity amongst divers has remained consistent for a long time. However, this popularity has also led to it being one of the most frequent sites for diving fatalities in the world, with anywhere between 130 to 200 deaths occurring at the spot. Bro, why the fuck would you go diving in these like crazy areas? Like, what's just, why would you do this to yourself? It doesn't make any sense to me, dude. People go into like caves, they can fucking like. This is why it's good to be fat, because then you're never gonna get that illusion that you can squeeze into like the smallest fucking crevasse in the entire world, known to fucking man, and go for like a deep diving exploration. You know what I mean? Like, what are you doing? What's so exhilarating about that to some of these people? You know what I mean? 
It's crazy to me. In recent years, this wide range of estimation means that you never know what you might find on a dive. And unfortunately, this YouTube video shows a diver coming face to face with the mortality of their hobby. The short video taken at a depth of 367 feet shows the POV of a diver, shining his light on what appears to be a deserted oxygen tank. Though as he approaches, it quickly becomes obvious that the oxygen tank was attached to a long dead diver, who must have underestimated okay. the danger of the blue hole. The identity of this diver has never been revealed. I said. Annalise Michelle Audio. Throughout a 10 month span beginning in the year of 1975, a 23-year-old woman named Annalise Michelle would undergo a series of exorcisms to rid her of what the priest believed to be a demonic possession. In reality, Annalise Michelle had been suffering from numerous seizures caused by epileptic psychosis, which Bam. was mistaken for possession. This led to a staggering 67 exorcisms being performed in secrecy on the woman. All what, what is an exorcism, like, um, involve? You know what I mean? Like, uh, how, like, are they massively stressful on the body to, like, the point where, like, this woman had, like, fucking made her shit even worse from getting the, uh, that type of fucking, like, an exorcism? Like, I truly wonder, you know? It's not just some holy water. Fuck, dude, are you kidding my balls? Sorry. That's inappropriate. Well, at the expense of her receiving legitimate help for her medical issues. Throughout the span of these sessions, various records would be made documenting the girl's behaviors, which would be uploaded to YouTube years later, providing some truly... I don't want to hear any of this shit. Audio. Barbarian underscore babe super chatted two dollars. I love these scary segments. In the end, Annalise would never be cured of her supposed possession and would ultimately die as a result of constant grueling exorcisms, as well as malnourishment she suffered as a result. Jesus Christ. Fuck. Stop, you're scaring me, bro. What the fuck? Why does this person want to scare me, dude? It doesn't make any sense. Oh, there's just it. I was playing. Uh, Finding a friend. On the evening of December 13th, 2019, a man by the name of Andre Grady had disappeared from his home in Newport, Virginia. Having been paralyzed in a drive-by shooting at the age of just five, Damn. the disappearance was especially concerning as his lack of mobility made it unlikely he left on his own accord. In the day following Andre last being seen, a group of his closest friends would band together to form a search party while live streaming the whole thing to further spread awareness in the community. Hey, yo, we down here at 24th and Marshall, yo. We doing a search party for Dre, man. This shit don't make no sense out here, yo. As the group continues filming, they eventually stumble across Andre's wheelchair marks in the grass leading to a nearby home. And upon checking the crawl space beneath it, they would find Andre's deceased body. What the fuck? In a crawl space? Oh, man, what? bro. What is it? Yo, y'all go, 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 go. Oh, and I see a shoe, bro. Oh, my God. Damn. He was beaten and shoved underneath the house. With oh, no motive for the attack ever why? being discovered. To this day, the mystery That's of Andre's life remains. But what's most heartbreaking about this clip is the fact that those who found him were his closest friends. Damn. And the pain in their voices to this day makes this entire video extremely difficult to watch. That's Man fucking terrible, dude. Woman. On what should have been a fun trip to Spain, a group of travelers were spending the day by the sea. When looking for a challenge, one member of their group would jump into the water beneath a short cliff. The current was raging, though the lady believed that she'd be able to make it out safely. The sea's fury is unmatched, however, and she'd soon grow overwhelmed, getting tossed around like a ragdoll. On the shore overlooking the struggling swimmer, a friend of the woman named Danilia Gagren would jump in and grab her in an attempted rescue. Though he too stood little chance, Good as game. the two of them would ultimately succumb to the treacherous water. Damn. And standing helplessly above, with the camera in hand, was Danilia's wife, who had no choice but to just stand there to watch them. That's fucked, as their bro. lives came to a very unfortunate end. Holly Cape Super Chatted four dollars and ninety nine cents. That last story about the girl going through the exorcisms is so sad and goes so much deeper. Yeah. Exorcisms are really messed up. True. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the, the fact that she was malnourished blows my fucking mind. Like, they didn't feed her to the point where she became fucking malnourished. That's insane to me. 
documentary follows the story of a woman named Michelle Goss as she prepares and then carries out her own euthanization. What? Wait, she's... Why? She did this not because of any terminal illness, but rather due to a series of small manageable illnesses. She effectively decided to pass away on her own terms. Okay, I guess I In the video, that. We watch as Michelle legally obtains pentobarbital on her 74th birthday, a drug commonly used in places where self euthanasia is legal. The whole thing is incredibly eerie, despite the fact that Michelle remains completely calm throughout the entire process and never wavers from her impending death. I guess she's ready to go, but fuck, man, that's crazy. You know, I'm sorry, you're the owner of the song, but I don't have the last word. I'd like to have the last word, but you know that Foucault said that there's nothing to say, hélas. We've asked him for almost nothing to say, he said there's nothing to say. She even has friends over for a party to celebrate both her birthday and the day she wants to die. Listen, <laughs> Vous voulez vraiment mourir aujourd'hui Absolument. Vous êtes persuadé de vouloir mourir Oui. Parce que si vous buvez ce médicament, vous vous endormez, vous allez mourir Oui. Ça c'est clair. C'est ma volonté. C'est votre volonté. Oui. Jesus, this is fucking crazy to me, dude. This is fucking crazy. Alors, je vous dis au revoir. Adieu. Au revoir, Eric. Au revoir, monsieur. Enfin, c'est ma volonté ferme et définitive. Michelle says her goodbyes as a friend makes the cocktail that would end her life in just a matter of minutes. And the video ends with Michelle passing away to the harmony of her favorite music. Okay, well, I guess that's good for her. I mean, that's the decision she wanted to make. Mezkizizna post result. <laughs> Bro, I'm not even going to try this. In Poland, a worker. I hope this isn't like a fucked up situation that they just laughed about. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It was taking place to protest the current conditions that medical personnel were facing. All right, fair enough. Gap. Yeah, I mean, medical personnel, especially nurses, are criminally underpaid, at least in America. It's crazy. Overworked, underpaid, it's nuts. Undervalued, frankly. There are some translated articles. It appears that the medics were demanding better resources, sick leave, and overall more balanced benefits. Okay. Not fair everyone enough. agreed with the movement, though, as their absence had a direct impact on patients in the area. During this particular video, we see a group of the medics protesting on stage, further explaining their purpose for striking, when out of nowhere, a gunshot rings out. Why? O godzinie 18.30 zapraszamy na naszą konferencję prasową. What happened? Nothing in this video is shown, but just off camera and directly in front of the people on stage, a man had taken out a handgun and taken his own life as a way of protesting the strike. What? Why? What the fuck? There is something incredibly dark about the shock in the faces of those who witnessed this, as everyone's individual reaction was different. One thing is for certain, though, and it's that this event that they had just seen is likely going to have a lasting impact on the rest of their lives. Fuck, bro. Brick video. On the 12th of June, 2000. Some of Brick Nerman? 2012. A car filled with two couples and a young child was driving down a two-lane highway in Russia. The car was equipped with a dash cam that would record a large truck passing by. Okay. Unbeknownst to them, though, the truck was filled with bricks, and out of nowhere, one would dislodge and fly directly at the car, crashing through its windshield at an no. unimaginable speed. They didn't have the fucking bricks covered correctly? What the fuck? Oh my god, that's horrible. Sitting in its direct path was 29-year-old Olga Gaikovich, no. who would be struck in the head, killing her instantly. Jesus Christ. This is the ultimate case of wrong place, and very unfortunately, wrong time. So I would turn around and fucking kill the guy who's driving that truck. Are you kidding me? That's fucking terrible. And although this video is very well known, the screams and cries from her husband, who had been sitting right next to her, is absolutely gut-wrenching. It makes the entire video far too disturbing. That's horrible. Show here tonight. Well, thank God they didn't show it. That would have killed me. That's horrible. Yemen couple drowns. This entry refers to a video. Dude, this is so people. horrible. How is this one worse than the first one? This one's terrible. Why the fuck are you making me watch this stuff? You guys are mean to me, dude. 12, 2013. That shows a young couple filming themselves in a local body of water. As the two joke around and pose for the camera, the man suddenly loses balance and slides down a steep drop off beneath the surface. As he desperately tries to regain his footing, he then appears to instinctively grab his girlfriend, pulling her into the deeper water as well. They both cling desperately to each other, 
trying to save themselves from drowning. They didn't know how to swim? They only make it worse. I'm confused. And in an instant, they both disappear, leaving nothing but the serene water and the sounds of nature. What the fuck happened? They, they got like sucked under the water? What the fuck? Their bodies were found days later. Diving accidents. Many will agree that drowning would be one of the worst ways to go. Which can, we, can you put like a can you put like a baby tripping and falling and like laughing as one of these segments just to break up the, the fucking break it up a little bit? This is terrible. It's making me sad. This is fuck. Videos of fatal diving accidents all the more chilling. Most famously, Yuri Lipsky had attempted a free dive in a location known as Blue Hole. Okay. The same spot mentioned in the previous layer when things went horribly wrong. Yuri's descent became uncontrolled and he fell to the bottom of the ocean way too quickly, causing him to suffer from nitrogen narcosis. What is that? This put him in a drunken like state oh, as he okay. plummeted over 115 meters below the surface. Damn. While down there, he fights with his gear before realizing that he would not be able to make it back up. And the moments he captured on his camera would be his final on Earth. The fuck? Another haunting account came from David Shaw, a decorated freediver who had set out on a retrieval mission in a particularly dangerous area. Prior to this, a fellow diver named Dion Dreyer had passed away in that very location. And given the fact that David was one of very few actually willing to do a deep dive in that location, he would volunteer to retrieve the young man's body. Damn. He did so while simultaneously trying to break a new diving record, which would be captured by a documentary crew filming the entire process. What? Why would you do that? That's weird. But okay, it's like it's like I'll save this guy, but I'm really just doing this for the for the world record. Support divers will meet him at different depths. They'll bring him food and liquids, and check his condition. An hour and a half into the dive. And an ominous message reaches the surface. What is what is the message? Though in a tragic case of irony, David, on his descent down, would also perish after becoming tangled with the very corpse he set out to catch. What he got tangled by it? What do you mean? Bro, I feel like I should turn this off. I feel like I should turn it off. You guys are saying it gets worse in this part. I don't know if I could do this anymore, bro. The Jim Jones Death Tip 78. The Jim Jones Death Tip 78 is a 44 minute recording of the moments before and during the Jonestown Massacre, a mass suicide slash murder carried out in 1978, where 909 people would tragically lose their lives. The cult, known as the People's Temple, had been convinced by their leader, Jim Jones, to drink cyanide-laced Kool-Aid, under the belief that the group was soon going to be exposed. While those who refused to drink the poison concoctions were forcibly injected with cyanide, the guards had even been instructed to shoot any members who had attempted to flee. Shockingly, all of this was captured by an audio recording that can now be found on YouTube well, in a I don't slightly find edited it. version. And it's honestly one of the hardest things you'll ever listen to. Well... No, no, I can't do it, bro. I don't know if I could do this. How very much I've tried to my best to give you the good life. But in spite of all of that I've tried, a handful of our people with their lives have made our life impossible. There's no way to detach ourselves from what's happened today. What that was a scandal As that Jones speaks to, do to this. his people, you can hear the sounds of death in the background. And most disturbingly, the sounds of children being comforted by their parents as they pass away. Aeroflight oh 593. God. Aeroflight 593 refers to the infamous Russian commercial airline crash that killed all 75 people on board. With the plane having fallen from the air not because of some sort of malfunction, but because of an extremely unfortunate mistake. In the cockpit, the pilot would allow his 12-year-old daughter and 16-year-old son to stand alongside him Why? as he flew the plane. He even went as far as to allow his son to take over the wheel as the plane had been in autopilot. However, the son would end up turning the wheel too hard in one direction, causing the plane to switch to manual steering and immediately plummet towards the ground below. From there, the pilots desperately tried to regain control of the falling plane, unaware of what was actually happening. With the whole struggle having been recorded, eventually being posted onto YouTube.
The terror in the voices of everyone in the cockpit is extremely dark, and made all the more horrific as the plane crashes into the mountain range below, killing everyone on board. Most tragically, it would later be revealed that if the pilot had simply taken his hands off the wheel, the plane would have automatically corrected itself and re-engaged the autopilot. The Astro World Would that have worked, though? Like, it seemed like they were spinning out of control, or did, he just, did they just start turning to the right? Damn, that's fucked. Clips. On the 5th of November 2021, Travis Scott had been hosting his annual Astro World. Wait, this made it in the Astro World thing? Wasn't that where like people got trampled because it was over fucking packed and Travis Scott's an idiot and didn't realize when they were like calling for help? He was, then he was like, yeah, hype it up. Festival at NRG Park in Houston, Texas, when things erupted into chaos. Upon Travis arriving on stage at approximately 9.02 p.m., the massive crowd of fans pushed towards the stage, causing one of the most horrific occurrences, a human crush. People were squeezed against the barriers and crushed to the point that many were unable to breathe, all the while desperately calling out for help. But help never came, and instead, over 300 people would be left injured with 10 sadly losing their lives. Yeah. For this entry, picking one video to show the chaos would be impossible, as so many accounts exist on YouTube from that day. And what is most prominent throughout these clips is the helplessness of it all, as the victims were left to their own devices in that crowd. And with the power of that many people pushing against you, death was always inevitable. The Station Nightclub Fire Flashing back to yet another concert disaster, this event took place on the 20th of February 2003. That night, a band called Great White had been performing at a nightclub called The Station, when their pyrotechnics would accidentally ignite the acoustic foam on the walls and ceiling surrounding the stage. Oh, Jesus Christ. What, they think he was part of the show? Did nobody leave? Almost immediately, the venue was set ablaze and covered Damn. in a thick black smoke. As a result, the crowd all rushed towards the exit and became trapped due to the high number of people trying to fit through the small doors. Desperate to escape, people would try and shove their way out, but this only made things more jammed. And before long, the smoke would cause many so tantalizingly close to the exit to perish. Yeah, I mean, that's what they say you die first when like a fire is that the is the smoke like smoke inhalation will take you first. As a result, 100 people would lose their lives. Jesus. With footage of the event later being posted to YouTube. And what has all stood out to me with this footage is just how fast it all happened. You're a fucking uh, Somebody said at least the cameraman made that side. Yeah, give a point. As within just moments, the fate of so many concert goers was sealed. The Versailles Wedding Hall Disaster Video Perhaps one of the most infamous disaster videos ever taken, the footage shows a packed dance floor within the Versailles Wedding Hall in Jerusalem on the evening of the 24th of May 2001. The event itself was a wedding for Karen and Asaf Draw, a young couple from the area who drew in hundreds of guests who were seen here dancing and having a good time. However, okay. things take a drastic turn as the floor below them begins to sag and eventually gives way. Jesus. What the fuck? In total, 23 people would fall to their deaths, with hundreds more being left seriously injured. An oh my investigation God. would later reveal that faulty construction was to blame, along Jesus. with negligence from the owner. That's horrible. The Beirut explosion. Of all the disaster videos found on YouTube, few are as shocking. I mean, I, uh, at this point, you might as well put fucking 9 11 in this goddamn video. That was a horrible tragedy. Oh those depicting the Beirut explosion. On the 4th of August 2020, a building known as Warehouse 12, located in the port of Beirut, would catch fire. And having been filled to the brim with ammonium nitrate and fireworks, the blaze would quickly Why? result in an explosion. Jesus. Following the initial blast, onlookers would record the ordeal in which you can actually see the flashes from the fireworks within the smoke. Although, much to these onlookers' surprise, the destruction wasn't finished yet, as suddenly another explosion would occur with this one being much larger. Jesus! Within moments, the entire area is seemingly blown to pieces, 
with the power of the blast alone being enough to cause buildings in the vicinity to crumble instantly. And Jesus. the blast itself what triggering Christ. seismic activity equivalent to a magnitude 4.5 earthquake. As a result, a the area was left completely decimated, with 218 people tragically losing their lives. I Much damn. like other disasters of this magnitude, it was captured in numerous videos, all of which proved to be equally as disturbing, with most of these clips eventually finding their way to YouTube. Wow. The Challenger Explosion of all the disasters discussed so far, this one is particularly morbid. Thanks Why was there a bunch of fucking fireworks in one building? That's it's crazy. A few utterly depressing details. On the 28th of January 1986, the United States attempted to launch a space shuttle named Challenger, only for it to explode just moments into its journey. Man. All seven crew members would sadly lose their lives, with one of which being a woman named Krista McAuliffe. Krista was actually a teacher at the time who was personally selected to partake in the mission after applying for the NASA teacher in space project. That's sad. That's fucked. I'll teach you not to ever go on a fucking spaceship, though. That's fucked up. Congratulations. Thank you. It was a firework factory? That's weird. We got to ban fireworks and factories, okay? So we're done. We're done with it. Capitalism's gone too far. Thank you very much, Brian. Simple question. Why you? <laughs> it's really hard to say. What's well, a dream come true for you? Oh, it certainly is. And sadly, her entire class had been watching at the time she was killed. No. People watched them all die in, in real time? That's horrible. They put that on the TV? And they just exploded? They were going to put Big Bird on that ship? Was that, was that real? Are you trolling me? That would be fucking terrible. Because if Big Bird goes on there, so does Snuffleupagus. Because Snuffleupagus is, is part of Big Bird's imagination. And then he'll die too. Jesus. What the fuck? That's crazy. We almost lost Snuffleupagus. How horrible. Along with countless other classrooms across the United States. Damn. Making matters even more horrible, the second place finisher for the contest, a woman named Barbara Morgan, was actually present at the launch and served as backup for Krista should she not be able to go. Her reaction to the incident was filmed live. She looked happy. Wait. Damn. She must be fucking happy she lost that contest. That's fucking I can't horrible. even imagine what must have been going through her mind watching the shuttle explode, knowing that she had so narrowly missed out on being on board. And this isn't even the only disturbing detail, as it would be later theorized that the crew aboard the Challenger almost certainly survived the initial blast. What? The main cab remained intact despite the explosion meaning that they were still alive and likely conscious as they fell to the water below, with the impact being their true cause of death. Oh, that's terrible. Jesus. Fuck. This is horrible. It can't get any worse, right? Because I'm fucking... I'm sad. Okay, let's do it. Congratulations on making it to the very bottom of the iceberg, and in turn, the very depths of YouTube. This level is filled with the content here on YouTube that, for one reason or another, truly strikes a chord with me. Some of these entries will be too graphic to show, but I'll do my best to walk you through them regardless. Oh, uh, do I... <laughs> this is gonna be fucking terrible, dude. I hate. It's fucking terrible. Man in the suitcase. Oh, February... dude, come on! What does that mean, dude? Of 2020, a woman named Sarah Boone would call 911, reporting that she had found her boyfriend, George Torres, unconscious in a suitcase within their home. In a According suitcase? According to the woman, the two had been playing a game of hide-and-seek the night before, when Torres what? decided to hide within an empty suitcase. Unable to find him, Sarah would give up her search and accidentally fall asleep, leaving Torres trapped in the luggage where he would eventually suffocate to death. He fucking fell asleep without the boyfriend? Or at least that was the story she was trying to tell. Unsurprisingly, this version of events just seemed too bizarre to be believed, and upon a I believed it. I don't know. Okay, fuck. Good thing I'm not a cop. God damn it. Investigating the matter further, police would eventually find a video on Sarah's phone that immediately dismantled the narrative she was trying to weave. The video shows the suitcase, with George inside of it, begging and pleading for Sarah to help him, to which she instead ignores him. Sarah. Fuck you. Sarah. <laughs> Stupid. Sarah. 
This is my name. Don't wear it up. During the video's runtime, we can see George. Did she? Did she realize that it was gonna kill him? Desperately trying to escape, as he presses against the sides of the tiny piece of luggage. But there was quite literally nothing he could do. Those zippers had sealed him in and trapped him at the mercy of Sarah, and her mind was already made up. Wait, so he got in there and then she zipped him up, and then she didn't let him out. Torres would eventually die a slow and brutal death due to asphyxiation, with it later being revealed that Sarah had drunkenly forced him into the bag and closed the zipper, ending his life in one of the most chilling ways I could ever Jesus imagine. Jesus Christ. For our son. On October 8th, 2008, a video tribute titled For Our Son was posted to YouTube, memorializing a young man who had lost his life in the Jokola High School massacre. The incident took place almost a full year before, on November 7th, 2007, where an 18-year-old named Pekka Eric Alvin would enter Jokola High School with a loaded handgun and begin firing on the students. Tragically, nine people would lose their lives, including the gunman. Knowing this video was made by the parents of a boy who lost their life in the incident makes it all so depressing, as it shows a slideshow of their son growing older and older throughout the years a growing process that would be abruptly cut short due to his shocking and traumatic death. And one can only imagine the grief that these parents were experiencing and likely continue to experience to this very day, as there's nothing worse than losing a child. Though there's something slightly off about this video, as around halfway through, things take a unusual and unexpected turn. As the young boy in the photos gets older and older, we begin to see what he may have looked like during the time of the shooting, to which it soon becomes apparent that this family son was not actually a victim, but instead, he was the perpetrator. What the fuck, dude? This is fucked. This whole thing is creeping me out, dude. Fuck. I wonder my when the fuck's my wife getting home, bro? I'm scared. The man behind the massacre. Oh my god. Blind date. Well, why the fuck would they make the video then? That's terrible. I gotta close my door. I gotta close it. Gotta close. I had to take a break. I had to take a I had to take a minute. I figured I'd go pee. I couldn't do it, dude. I had to check the locks. I did. I did. Blind Date was an art piece carried out by John Duncan, a man best known for his extreme and, in this case, highly disturbing performance art. Would he kill somebody for the art? Is that what he did? Leading up to the project, Duncan had experienced the collapse of a long-term relationship, and feeling empty and angry that he had wasted so much time on something that inevitably failed, he wanted to punish Life. himself. This eventually gave him the idea that he would get a vasectomy, and thus take away okay. his ability to ever have children in the future. But, well, you could reverse those, but okay. But being the eccentric artist that he is, he viewed this punishment as an opportunity to base his next performance off, which is where Blind Date comes into play. Knowing that he would soon be losing his ability to have children, Duncan decided to use what he described as his last potent seed on this project, and he wanted it to carry a deeper symbolic meaning. What? So he hatched the idea of purchasing a deceased body, having intercourse with it, and then sewing their body closed before its burial. That's not art, dude. That's just raping a fucking dead body. Oh my god. Thus burying his final seed as well. And this is something that he would not only imagine, but actually carry out, traveling to Tijuana where a mortician allowed him to use a body at the cost of $80. What? Dude, what are you talking about? The mortician? It was like, yeah, sure. Bro, imagine that happens like far too much. It's like, yeah, you can go fuck a dead body. I mean, like, imagine there's there's probably morticians like, yeah, you just fuck this body. Like, oh, I got three, I got three clients coming in today to fuck bodies. Oh my god, this is an art. This is an artist. This person is fucking insane. Duncan's original plan was to film the entire ordeal and then display the film at an art installation. Why? But the mortician forbade him from using a camera, so he instead used an audio recorder to capture the sounds of him and this corpse. To this day, oh, play it. that audio can be found right here. Don't on YouTube. play it. Thank you, fucking Lord Jesus Christ. Wait. Petition for where'd they get this picture from? Then, what the fuck is this? Is if if they couldn't if they couldn't record it to this a camera. So he instead and then display the film at an art installation. But what the, the mortician hell is this? forbade him from using a camera. So he instead used an audio recorder to capture the sounds of him and this corpse. To this day, that audio can be found right here on YouTube. Jimmy's Wish. 
This is a channel that I've been wanting to cover for years now, but the graphic- Yeah, I guess he could have probably charged more than $80, but you know what? Probably should have done in the first place. Nature of it has pretty much ruled out a full-scale deep dive. The videos on this channel consist of a young boy named Jimmy, who is shown laying in a hospital bed, connected to countless tubes and machines that That's are presumably sad. keeping him alive. The visuals are horrible, as in most clips and images, it's clear that he is suffering and completely unresponsive to the world around him. It's a pretty typical, it's basically like your, your, your typical TikTok live. I mean, there are so many TikTok lives of like kids with horrible fucking, you know, disabilities that are hooked up to like 18 different fucking machines and moms are like, oh, please give us money. That's all fucked. Which begs the question, how did this happen? Well, the channel itself was set up by Jimmy's father, who claims his son's condition is a result of his doctors suffocating him with a plastic bag. He needs your help now. Why would they do that? My son's ribcage is collapsing into his heart and lungs, and he's running out of time. His shoulders and hips are broken and disconnected, and repeatedly and cruelly denied medical intervention. The doctors know he will clearly die, and the doctors know the police will not investigate. My son was suffocated with a plastic bag by two Japanese doctors and two nurses. Though this, of course, is just one side of the story, what? as some believe that the father is merely consumed by grief, which has understandably caused him to slowly lose his mind. But either way, the full truth of this channel is not really known today. And putting the disturbing mystery element aside, it is truly one of the darkest and most tragic channels the site has ever seen, as the pain this child and his father are experiencing is all too real. Okay. Cultural Philistine. On December 14th, 2012, a 20-year-old named Adam Lonzo would enter Sandy Hook Elementary armed with weapons and proceed to start shooting, leading to the deaths of 26 people, not including his mother, whom he would also kill along with himself. Jesus. Since the slaying, multiple clips have emerged of Lonzo, most notably playing DDR at his local arcade, a game that he was said to be obsessed with, playing for hours and hours on end each time. Right, I'm going to my local arcade and I'm going to start beating everybody that plays DDR with the fucking bat. That's it. That's, that's all I needed to hear. It's over for them. Hey, though we also had a YouTube channel that went by the name of Cultural Philistein. The reason behind this name itself is still unconfirmed, but one chilling theory has emerged as users on Reddit would discover an old book from 1988 that too was titled Cultural Philistein. And in a haunting coincidence, the author's name was Cindy Hook, insinuating that Lanza had always planned on making Sandy Hook his target, and the clues were there all along. The videos themselves are quite disturbing, featuring a black screen and just the sound of Lanza's voice. School is such a great place. We get to learn stuff. Become a better person to make a better tomorrow. And I think, well, what is school? School is culture. Basically, it's cultural indoctrination. I don't know why I don't choose to do it. Why am I expecting to accomplish anything before I do it? And though this alone is highly distressing, there's one reason why I chose this channel as the final entry for this iceberg. The Sandy Hook Massacre happened all the way back in 2012, and since then, people have poured an obscene amount of time into documenting Lanza's life, pouring over every single online posting, every writing, and any trail he may have left behind. He's by far one of the most well-studied killers in the internet age. But despite all this, Cultural Philistein, his own personal YouTube channel, was only discovered just last year. Despite being live for over a decade, it wouldn't be until 2021 that this channel belonging to Lanza would be found. With the millions and millions of people who have studied Adam Lanza, one of the most evil people to ever exist on this earth. Well, it's probably a good thing that these things don't get signal boosted, but fuck. No one ever found his YouTube channel. It just sat there for years and years and years, dormant in the shadows. And if a channel belonging to him could have gone unnoticed for so long, then just imagine what else is out here, hiding in those same shadows. It's a horrifying and fascinating idea all at the same time, and it all truly leaves me to wonder what we'll uncover next. And with that, we have officially reached the end of YouTube's Darkest Iceberg. I want to give a massive thank okay. you to Mama Max, Listen. Really Sociable, Nexpo, and Disturbin. Listen, I'm never, never again, guys. Never again will I watch a fucking spooky fucking iceberg in my entire life. Oh my god, I hated that so much, dude. That was fucking terrible that you motherfuckers had me watch that. That was fucking miserable. I'm scared. I'm shitting and farting and pooping and I'm coming myself. I'm fucking, I'm afraid, bro. I'm afraid. I want Papa Gut to pee on my face. But just as a friend, there's nothing weird about that. I want him to pee on my face.